Good evening, Tom. I understand you've created a new set of binaural beats for your 20th anniversary of My Big Toe. Everyone has really appreciated the last set of binaural beats. Can you tell us how these are different and special? Yes, I can. Uh, the first group of binaural beats were created for an immersive and we needed 13 because that's how many places we had for the people to go back and listen to audio. Okay. Well, I looked at this, the, what we'll call it the acoustic space for binaural beats. And that acoustic space at the low end is at 32 hertz. Now I'm talking about the carrier frequency, you know, not the, not the binaural beats themselves, but the carrier frequency that creates the binaural beats. So the low end of that is 32 hertz. You can't get much below that because if you go below that, most people either can't hear it or the equipment can't reproduce it. So that's about as low as a tone that you can work with and make a binaural beat. Now on the upper end, there's around 512 hertz. On the upper end, we go to 512 hertz. Okay, at 512, the sound is a real high buzz, almost a whistle. And if you go much above that, it becomes annoying. It becomes like fingernails down the blackboard because it's a high shrill whistle that most people would find annoying. So that's kind of the space in which the binaural beats have to take place between 32 and 512. Well, uh, I broke the space into frequencies that follow the power of two. That's 32 and then double that 64 and double that's 128, double that's 256, double that is 512. So that covers the space. Now, why did I break it into powers of two? I really don't know. It just seemed intuitively like that would be a good idea because it covers the space nicely. And and I just uh, had an intuition that that would work better than any other selection. So we have a lot of, you know, if you think about computation, you know, and binary, all of that works in terms of powers of two. And we talk about consciousness being digital consciousness being an information system. And it just seemed like a nice fit to use powers of two because those are kind of natural frequencies between the upper and lower ranges of, of uh, sonic space for making binaural beats. So looking at the space and, and wanting to change each binaural beat, not in the binaural beats that I do, because I have a particular binaural beat formula that is, I think, the most powerful formula. It's alternations between little bits of high going up to eight hertz for a lower alpha going down and mostly the theta state, some dropping down into the delta region. And it's quite a, a mix of things are going on there as far as the binaural beats go. But then there's the base frequencies. First, let me describe how binaural beats are made. You have two tones, two base frequency tones. So let's say 100 hertz and 104 hertz. Okay, now those are two pure sine waves, two pure tones. If you put one in one ear, you know, one part of the headphone, just you now this has to be stereo. If you're not listening with a stereo equipment and have stereo headphones and have a, a player that actually producing real stereo, then you won't get the optimum effect. So we wanna put a pure tone in one ear of 100 Hertz and in the other ear, we want to put a pure tone of 104. Now, those tones run through your nervous system that takes care of the, the sound in the brain, you know, that part of the brain that, that does sound. It'll run through that, and the right side and the left side of your brain meet at a point between the two hemispheres called the corpus callosum. And in that corpus callosum, you actually get a beat frequency. So the mixing of these tones isn't taking place 
in the air like it would be if you had those two tones coming out of speakers say they would mix in the air and you'd hear the beats what would four hertz beat sound like it sound like one 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 something like that it would be four ones per second that's four hertz that's what hertz means it's a named after a guy whose name was hertz and it's just frequency you know it's the cycles per second so it's the beats per second so that's what we mean by four hertz so anyway we have this pure tone and a pure tone plus a little difference going in each ear they mix at the corpus callosum and that drives your brainwave frequency okay now brain waves are measured by putting a bunch of electrodes on top of your head you've probably had this when you've gone into the doctor for a checkup and they check your eeg they stick electrodes all over your head and they get out a pattern of energy a pattern of waves and you have some energy in many frequencies you know it starts at generally at, at the low alpha that's where most of the most relaxed feelings are and then you go up through high alpha where you're a little less relaxed but still relaxed and then you get into beta and so on you get these different frequencies when you are wide awake and um, engaged in physical things then you have higher frequencies in general and as you relax the energy tends to settle down into the lower frequencies more and more of your psychic energy settles down into the lower frequencies so alpha is just chilled out relaxed okay so that's when you are just relaxing and chilling you tend to be in an alpha state now an alpha is around 10 hertz i mean it's a it's a range it's not like it's just at 10 hertz but it's a range low alpha would be 8 hertz uh, higher alpha would maybe be 15 but it's in that range is where you relax now the next underneath alpha is theta theta is that place in your eeg where you are on the borderline between being conscious and being unconscious okay it's it's that space you get in just before you fall asleep that hypnagogic area where things happening in your mind you know, just before you fall asleep that's the theta space and beneath that is delta delta is unconscious now when you go through sleep cycles you know every night there's you go through a sleep cycle that's about an hour and a half long and everybody's a little different and from time to time so they're not exactly an hour and a half but it's about that much on average you go from alpha through theta to delta so you get a, a lighter sleep where most of the dreaming takes place and then you go through a theta and then you go through a delta where you're just unconscious you're just not aware of anything and that's your deep sleep and you spend a certain amount of time in delta and then you go back up through alpha again and back up then you know to low alpha or theta then back up to alpha and it's just a cycle you go through every you know hour and a half so that's the sleep cycle so if you take someone who has been meditating for about 10 years a serious meditator a monk someone who spends some serious hours meditating give them about 10 years to practice and you will see that they put almost all their energy almost all their mental energy all the frequencies they have kind of collapse down into the theta region when they are meditating so a meditating monk produces an eeg that's most of its energy is in the theta region okay that is a good meditation state so we run these binaural beats at four hertz because four hertz is right in the middle of that theta state and this is the state we're trying to encourage so what these binaural beats do is they drive your eeg they drive your brainwave output so you put on these headphones and you get a four hertz binaural beat if you fight it and say oh no i'm going to stay awake anyway well you can fight it you know it's not that these binaural beats will force you into a particular state they're, they're not forceful but they encourage you 
They make it easier for you to get into that theta state. And better yet, they help you hold it. So you not only get into it, but you can hold it there for an hour if you want to, staying in that state, solidly staying there. Now, see, that's the problem. Most people who aren't monks and don't meditate five or six hours a day, they might get into a theta state, but it comes and goes. They'll be in a theta state for 30 seconds, and then thoughts come in, and then they're not, and their mind's all over the place. It's what you get from that 10 years of meditation is a steadiness, a control, a discipline that allows you to put yourself in a theta state and stay there without bouncing in and out of it. That's the hard part. That's the part that takes the 10 years practice. So these binaural beats, as long if you have those binaural beats playing for an hour, then you're locked into that theta state for about an hour. And unless you are not cooperating with it and trying to fight against it, just relax and let your mind flow with it, then you'll stay solid in that theta state for a whole hour, just like any self-respecting monk would. So what it does is the binaural beats are an aid to meditation. A good set of binaural beats will give you an experience in meditation similar to that that you would get if you say practice seriously for a, for a decade. So that's the advantage of it. Most people are not monks and most people don't practice that much at their meditation. And they can hold a meditation state really only for seconds at a time, minutes at a time, and their minds are all over the place. So using the binaural beats is a technology that makes you function like a monk, like somebody who's been practicing meditation for a decade. So that's the advantage of them. I use this binaural beat space from 32 hertz up to 512 hertz in steps of powers of two. Now, I didn't want to jump, say, from 32 hertz to 512, because that would be such a big leap that it would go from this real throaty growl, like that, up to this little high tone, and that would just be jarring. So I wanted to just move from, from one to the other, right? We have now 32, right, 64, 128, 256, 512, five. We've got five of them. So I can slip from any one to the next one. So I did that. And I started with the high end. So I'd start, say, with 512 and then slide down to 256 during the binaural beat. So we start at 512, say, in 512 plus four for a four hertz binaural beat. And then I would shift that down a little bit to where the five, you know, I'd stay at 512 maybe for 10 or 15 minutes. Then I'd have the 512 just slide very gradually down into the 256. And the 256 would then in 20 minutes just slide down into the 128 and so on. So I had these, these base frequencies slide from one to another, but without skipping steps. So they're always in these five steps that I went from one to the next, to the next, to the next. And what that did is it helped people stay focused better than if you just play a single tone. Now, when I was working with binaural beats back in Monroe's lab, we just listened to single tones. But with some experimenting, and over the years, I've, I've learned some few things with the binaural beats. And I've learned that the bass frequency is also a significant part of the experience. And that some people do well with the higher end, you know, the 512, 256, other people do better at the lower end. But a mixture of the two is really better. Because any time you do something with your mind and with your body that's just repetitive, your body begins to ignore it. So if you just listen to, say, 512 all the time, the whole tape for a whole 50 minutes, you just listen to 512, eventually your body begins to ignore that because it's constant. Your body tunes out things, but your body pays attention to changes. As things change, that grabs your attention. So 
using that fact of, uh, I guess, physiology, um, I used to I change the bass frequencies in pleasant ways. My first set was to go from higher to lower. So I'd go maybe, you know, I'd start at, uh, at 512, then 256, and I'd just run down the ramp. Or I'd start at uh, 64 and run down to 32. Or I'd start at 128, you know, and run down to 64, down to 32. So there's only so many ways that you can do that. And there's actually 14 ways that you can take five things and always keep them in a sequence and run from higher to lower. There's exactly 14 ways that that can be done. So I had to have for the immersives we were doing 13 tapes. I call them tapes, 13 binaural beats had to be uh, created. So I left one out and that was a 6432. I left that one out because 32 is a little problematic anyway, because you have to have really good stereo equipment and to reproduce it. And some people just can't hear it in any case because it's the very low end of our ability to hear. So I left that one out and we used those 13 and they were very successful. And that's the older set that we're talking about. All right. Now, the choice to always have them run from higher frequencies to lower frequencies, to have the base frequency change in that direction, was kind of arbitrary. That uh, wasn't, I didn't have a really good reason for doing that, but uh, it was nice that they all had that kind of sameness to it. But there's another 14 on the other side of that, that run up, they go from 32 up to 64, up to 128, and so on. Instead of running downhill in frequency, they run uphill. Now, one might think that, that going from the higher to lower is good because you're going from a higher mental state to a lower, you know, deeper state, and that running, running downhill would be good. But on the other hand, one might think I was going from a lower frequency up to a higher frequency, that would be good, you know, so there's really no good intellectual reason for why one would be any better than the other. So what I've done for these new binaural beats is I've done all the ones that I didn't do for the immersives. Plus, I did the one that I didn't do that were the, were the, the sliding down. There was one, I only did 13 because that's all I needed for the immersive. So I, I did the last one, the 14th one, because there's 14 ways that these things can happen. So I did the 6432. That was the last one of that sliding down. And then I did the 14 of the sliding up. So this set now has 15 in it. The first set had 13 in it. This new set, has the one that I didn't do from the first set, which is the 6432, plus the 14 that, that slide from lower frequencies to higher frequencies. How does that combination work within that acoustic space that you're talking about? <laughs> well, what I, what I have then, if you, if you get both of these sets of binaural beats, then you basically ha are exploring all of the functional acoustic space that binaural beats can be in. Like I say, 32 is as low as you can go. 512 is about as high as you want to go. And that then breaks them into nice chunks in terms of powers of two. And that pretty much explores all of the binaural beat space between the highest and the lowest. Between the high, If you get much higher than that, the, the tones are like shrill whistles and they're not very nice. You get anything below 32 and nobody will be able to hear it and your equipment couldn't reproduce it anyway. So that's the whole set. Now, that way I've covered the entire sonic space, if you like, between 32 and 512 and every possible way of sliding, you know, not skipping any steps, not going from 512 all the way down to 32 in one big hop because that would be disconcerting sliding from the one to the next, to the next, to the next. There are only, like I say, 14 ways to 
slide downhill and 14 ways to slide uphill using those five frequencies that I'm using. So these two sets together basically represent all the binaural beats that you can create out of going by powers of two between these higher limit and the lower limit that, that I'm talking about. So they make a, a really nice set. Now, I think some people will find that the second set where the frequencies increase, the steps are going to higher frequencies, they may find those a lot better. You see, it's very individual as to how you react to any binaural beat. And it's even, it even changes with the same person, but different people like different ones. And though the binaural beats are all going to stay the same, all, uh, what, uh, you know, 14 on either side, all 28 of them, you know, they're going to stay the same, but it's you, the person that puts the headphone on. It's, it's the human being that is very changeable. The attitudes you have, the feelings you have, the mindset you're in at the instant you put that headset on will have a lot to do with the experience you have. And that changes from time to time. As you grow, as you evolve, then different things will work differently for you. The binaural beat that just was the worst one ever will turn into the best one ever as you change. So you should constantly explore all of these binaural beats all 28 of them, because like I say, what was your worst might turn into your best. And at different times, different moments, different ways that you feel, one binaural beat will be much better than the others for that. It's a very strong function of the individual who's putting the headset on and where their mind is at the time. So if you practice with all 28 of them, you will find that there'll be groups of them that tend to work better for you at these times than those times. And eventually you'll learn to kind of optimize your choices through all the binaural beats. But I think there will be a lot of people who will find this new set to be even more powerful for them than the old set. Because in their mind, the concept of raising your frequency is a concept that will resonate with them. And they will feel that going up, okay, I'm, I'm not in a, I'm not in the gross physical low frequency stuff. I'm going uphill and they'll have that mindset and that will translate to a better experience. Where on the other side, a person who likes the sliding down, they'll think of that not in terms of getting lower and lower frequency. They'll think of it in terms of getting deeper and deeper into their meditation. Oh, and they'll like that. So see, these are just metaphors, right? Deeper into your meditation or increasing your vibration. Okay, they have two different directions. And just that attitude that you have toward the downward motion or the upward motion will make a big difference in what you get out of it. You know, if people don't realize how much their attitude affects the results that they get, your beliefs, the way you see the world, the metaphors you, you use to, to uh, describe the world make a big difference in how these beats will affect you. Attitude determines altitude, perhaps. <laughs> yeah. I think it's fascinating that you have covered the, as you say, the entire sonic space. This opens up so many more possibilities for people finding the ones that can really help them. I think that's Absolutely fascinating. So that's it. And, um, you know, it's been 20 years. So we needed to do something to celebrate that, uh, you know, MBT was published in 2003. 20th anniversary. And it's, been, it's been 20 <laughs> years out there. Of course, it's grown. It's not like it's the exact same thing it was 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. I've learned a lot. You know, my own understanding has, has evolved tremendously and, and, uh, you know, it's a different thing than it was in 2003, but fundamentally, you know, all the fundamentals were there in 2003. All the abilities to apply it and understand all the logical consequences, well, they've been developing all along and will continue to develop, I'm sure. 
So we're always in a state of learning and, and, and improving our, our understanding and improving for me, uh, you know, better ways to explain things. So it is an evolving thing, but it's been evolving now for 20 years. And uh, uh, Keith and Donna were thinking about, well, what can we do to celebrate this 20 year mark? And uh, well, this is it folks. We're, we're giving you another whole set of binaural beats. And we're finishing that very last one that you didn't get in the first 13. We're giving you that number 14. That is the uh, 64 down to 32. You'll just have to get a little better player and a little better headset that can do that 32. But some people love that 32. Now that 32 hertz beat is one that you feel as much as you hear. It's so low that it actually shakes your insides. It's a it's a low growl that makes your whole body pulse at that time. And some people that that disturbs them and other people that just is perfect for them. They get into that groove and they just get lost in that 32 sound. So it's it's a um, it's really a for most people, it's good. You know, there's just a few people that don't like it, but they get and I think they get frightened by it because they feel their body vibrating and moving with that 32 and it frightens them a little. I so, found it very interesting and very yeah. powerful. All these binaural beats, whether they're sliding up, sliding down, you know, whatever, whatever frequencies they are from 32 to 512, they all have the same binaural beats coming out of them. In other words, the binaural beats, the actual differences between the frequencies. Yes, the brace frequencies are changing all over the place, but the actual binaural beats that they're producing is the same for all of them. All of them have the same structure in their binaural beats because that's the structure that my experience over you know, 40 years is the most powerful way to entrain brain waves is that set of binaural beats. So all of these different base frequencies and changes in base frequencies add a different ambience, a different feel. They connect to your attitudes and to your feelings and to your, your mind differently because of the base frequencies, but they all have the same powerful set of binaural beats lying underneath of them with the same structure that, that I've optimized over years of doing this to be the best structure for creating this meditation aid. So the meditation aid is effective. So they all have that same medicine, if you like, or the same ingredients that, that make a difference. It's all there. But the way you interact with them has a lot to do with that base frequency. It's not just the binaural beats, but the way you interact with them is connected also to the base frequency. You interact differently with high tones and with low tones. So it's a it's a good mix, like I say, over the entire sonic space. But all the all the basic binaurals are same in every one of them. All twenty eight of them have the same basic binaural structure, which is the structure I've found to be most potent. Well, thank you, Tom. This is going to be an exciting new launch of this product to celebrate your twentieth anniversary of my big toe. Thank you so much for doing this. Uh, you're welcome. I and MBT Events hope you like this video. We now have well over a thousand hours of free video on this YouTube channel. Though these videos are free to our viewers, they represent many thousands of hours in production and editing, and many thousands of dollars invested in video and audio equipment, along with the required computers and software to store and process the raw video into finished products. So far, all of this content has been funded directly out of our own pockets. Be assured, we will always continue to produce free content. It is our life, our purpose, a labor of love that we will continue to pursue as best we can. However, those pockets are not as deep as they used to be. Thus, we are now seeking to augment our resources with support from our viewers. If you find something of significant value in our videos, Please consider supporting their production through our Patreon account, 
or through a one-time donation. It would be very much appreciated. The links are in the description below. Thank you.